Blondie's first number one hit came in early 1979. It soared on the strength of frontwoman Debbie Harry's silky vocals, universal lyrics, and a disco dance beat. During their time, Blondie had already established themselves as one of the premier punk, post-punk, and new wave bands in the New York scene. But they'd yet to find any real lasting success in their own country on those first two albums. However, that was all to change. And this song would become one of the biggest hits of the decade. In this episode, we're talking all about Blondie's worldwide smash, Heart of Glass. Hello there, it's Warren Hewitt here. Hope you're doing marvelously well. Welcome back to another episode of Songs That Changed Music. If you haven't already, please check out the other videos in this series. You can also subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you're into production, you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. Blondie was formed by lead vocalist Debbie Harry and guitarist bassist Chris Stein in 1974. Right away, they stood out as one of the leaders of the American punk rock and new wave scene that was beginning to take shape in New York City. And in true new wave fashion, Blondie infused a diverse range of influences into their work, including pop, disco, reggae, and even early rap. Their self-titled debut release, which came with little acclaim in 1976, performed best in Australia by reaching number 14 on the charts. This was followed by Plastic Letters in 1977, which entered the top 10 in the UK and broke into the US charts at only number 78. Blondie's classic lineup also stabilised during this period, featuring Debbie Harry on vocals, Chris Stein and Frank Infante on guitars, Clem Burke on drums, Jimmy Destry on keyboards, and English musician Nigel Harrison on bass. As a six-piece for the first time, Blondie got to work on their third album, Parallel Lines, in the summer of 1978. The project was a major success for the band, climbing to number one in the UK and breaking through at number six in the US. This was thanks to several popular singles, including the international number one, Heart of Glass. The first version of this song that Debbie Harry and Chris Stein wrote was called Once I Had Love. And that was written between 1974 and 75, making it one of the earliest Blondie songs the pair had written together. The original demo had a slow, funky sound over a simple disco beat. A second demo of the song was recorded in 1978 but with a much poppier feel. The group made multiple attempts at working out the song, also unsuccessfully trying it as a reggae track as well as a ballad. The disco influence persisted as the backbone of the song. In subsequent interviews, the band would jokingly refer to Heart of Glass as the disco song. Interestingly, Chris Stein also notes that when they were recording Parallel Lines, they weren't thinking as much about disco as they were thinking about bands like Kraftwerk. To them, they were thinking more electro dance than disco. But that blend is what makes this so special. Until the Parallel Lines sessions, Blondie hadn't planned to include it on the record. But producer Mike Chapman fixated on the demos of the song. In 1978, we got this producer, Mike Chapman who asked us to play all the songs we had. At the end, he said, have you got anything else? We sheepishly said, well, there is this old one. He liked it. He thought it was very pretty and started to pull it into focus. The lyrics weren't about anyone. They were just a plaintive moan about lost love. The band worked it out and Heart of Glass became a disco tinge, pop rock song and a global mega hit. It wasn't unusual for Blondie to experiment with disco. They'd covered Donna Summer's I Feel Love many times live. 
Harry was also obsessed with Giorgio Moroder's innovative Euro disco production, telling the NME in 1978 that was the type of music she wanted to break into. She eventually worked with Moroda on the Grammy-nominated 1980 single, Call Me. Still, Blondie was accused of selling out after the popularity of Heart of Glass, their so-called disco song. As pioneers of the New York punk scene, their choice to use synthesizers was criticised by many of their peers. Even Clem Burke refused to play the song live, at least until it went to number one worldwide. As far as the, um, the, 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 the Parallel Lines album, you had so many sort of different singles. I mean, like, um, did you have much say in, in what records were going to be released or was it just left to really the, the markets and the companies? The companies pretty much. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty much the licensees. We just wanted to hold up. We didn't want Heart of Glass to be the first single off right. the album. Like, we released two in America before that, which totally didn't do anything at all. So Heart of Glass came out and that really helped us. That was a big help to us in America. Did, did you get frightened of, of being referred to it with a disco image in just in that time? Oh, no, not at all. Huh? Not at all. The goddess in the studio of 54. We can yeah. never get in before that record. <laughs> That's just, yeah. And it, it increased, yeah. our, incre increased our chicness, you know? Like, we all of a sudden we became, like, more chic on a trendy sort of uh, hairdresser level. Blondie recorded Heart of Glass at the record plant in New York City of June of 1978. The entire production of the song was built around the Roland CR-78 drum machine which was significant for two reasons. Firstly, the device came out the same year, making Heart of Glass one of the first big songs to use it. And secondly, it was very uncommon for a rock band to incorporate drum machines into their music at that time. Keyboardist Jimmy Destry is responsible for bringing the drum machine and synthesizers into the session, ultimately shaping the entire sonic palette of the song. As was the case with old disco songs, an acoustic kick drum was recorded separately from the drum machine, which took Clem Burke hours to nail in time with the rest of the track. The recording process was a difficult one, as Mike Chapman had to wrangle a group of lackadaisical punk rockers into playing extremely tight on a locked rhythm disco beat. The studio atmosphere at times was very tense. Bassist Nigel Harrison got very frustrated with Mike Chapman over his demand for him to play better and threw a synthesizer at him. The band were very loose as players and Heart of Glass needed to be really tight. Clem and Nigel both had issues with me during the recording of the track. We were very close to having some serious fights the whole time. It took a week to get it right, but in the end, it sounded amazing. Keyboardist Jimmy Destry used a CR78 drum machine to program the backbeat, which sounds nothing like an acoustic drum kit. It's most prominent in the intro of the song. The choice to layer real drums on top of the drum machine reflects the hybrid nature of a rock band writing a disco song. As Mike Chapman mentioned, though, it was an arduous process getting Clem Burke to play in time with the drum machine. The kick drum, for example, took hours to track and was recorded separately from the rest of the kit. So as well as playing the kick drum separately, the bass drum, with the CR78 drum machine, Clem Burke also played snare and hats and toms as a separate take. So what you have is you have a kick drum locking with the CR78, and then you have these overdub snares, cymbals, hi-hat and toms. It's a really interesting effect because when you hear Mike Chapman's remix of the track, he pushes up the kick drum with the CR78, and it's pretty darn tight, but it gives it a really unique feel. It was just as tricky getting bassist Nigel Harrison to lock into the groove. Chapman was so hard on him that the two very nearly came to blows. Still, the end result was well worth it. There's also a bit of synth bass played by Jimmy Destry. Lay it in.
Next, Destry built the lush synth parts on a Roland SH3A and a Mini Mook. Chris Stein recorded the guitar parts on two separate tracks. Some chords get bent out of tune in places since he was a looser style rock guitar player, but in context, it all works. Debbie Harry's ethereal vocals are the signature of the song. She combined multiple layers, particularly to form the chorus, including a low octave to fill out the sound. Seemed like the real thing, but I was so blind. Much mistrust, love's gone behind. In between, what I find is pleasing and I'm feeling fine. Love is so confusing, there's no peace of mind. If I fear I'm losing you, it's just no good. You're teasing like you did well. Heart of Glass was released as a single in January 1979. It became a number one hit in 12 countries, including the United States and the UK, the band's first major worldwide song. Blondie was on tour in Europe when they first got the news that the song had reached number one in the US. They'd had some decent chart performance, in the US, but this was massive for them. They had a smash hit, a number one single in their own market. It was number one around the world. We'd had a lot of hits, but this was our first at home. Chapman was in Milan with us and said, join me in the bar. I thought, oh God, I just wanna to go to bed. But we dragged our asses down and he told us it was a number one in America. We drank a lot. In 2004, Rolling Stone included the single at number 255 on its list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. Pitchfork has named it the 18th best song of the 70s. Heart of Glass also ranks at number 66 in the UK's list of all-time best-selling singles, with 1,320,000 copies sold. The use of nuclear power is merely a symptom of our troubled time. It is time for all Americans to take control of their own lives and stop being pushed around and present. The race for nuclear superiority can only end with the destruction of civilization. Heart of Glass proved to Blondie and the world that they could continue making music on their own terms. In spite of the controversy and criticism from peers in the punk rock and new wave scenes, Blondie's leading duo, Debbie Harry and Chris Stein loved disco production. Their unapologetic enthusiasm led to one of the biggest hits of their entire career and one of the best-selling singles of 1979. The song's legacy continues, most recently being covered by Miley Cyrus on her 2020 album Plastic Hearts. Thanks ever so much for watching. I cannot overstate just how influential Blondie were. Blending between punk and post-punk and new wave and bringing in you know, elements of reggae and disco and rap, they really were the quintessential post-punk band for me. And what I mean by that is a band that just brought in all of these different influences and blended them together to just make great music. On top of the fact that Debbie Harry and Chris Stein wrote amazing songs. So if you've got any other suggestions, any other bands, any other songs you'd like to know about, please leave them below. Thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this series and have a marvellous time. So long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, au revoir, adios, adios, tschüss, goodbye.